So here's a progress update on the NES PC build. What you see here is the motherboard mounted in the bottom of the NES. And you'll notice that it's mounted sideways instead of front to back. And the reason I didn't want to do it front to back was because I would have run into a host of problems and I didn't want to cut a hole in the back of the NES. It would have caused me to do that. There's the power switch assembly which is uh, in the NES and hooked up to the motherboard. I also finished the hard drive and what you're looking at is the hard drive inside a Zelda cartridge and all I did was take the cartridge apart, took out the game part, put the hard drive in it, secured it, and then just put the cartridge back together. Now after getting all of this together, I was pretty eager to test it out. So let's go ahead and do that. I've just hit the power button, let's just see what happens. Now, Windows has already been installed on the hard drive, and I've booted this up a couple of times during the build process, so I'm pretty confident it'll work. Any second now. Any second. Um. Hmm. Shit, as you can imagine, I was pissed. I mean, I would hit the power button, it would power on, but nothing would happen. I would just have a blank screen staring at me. I mean, it would work before, why wouldn't it work this time? <laughs> Enough playing around, I've gotta fix this. So I took the system apart piece by piece to troubleshoot the issue, and I did narrow it down to one thing, the motherboard. Damn motherboard. So, after spending hours staring at the motherboard diagram, I discovered that a solder joint had come loose and fallen out of the motherboard. Now, why did this happen? Well, I think it had something to do with the way that I mounted the motherboard inside the NES. If you look at the bottom of the NES without any alterations, you'll see that the middle part is raised up. Now, in my design, I needed the motherboard to set very low, near the bottom of the NES, which meant mounting it below the power switch assembly. Well, in order to do that, I had to cut that middle part out. That's a problem, because if you look at the bottom of the NES with the middle part cut out, you'll see that it looks very flimsy, and it is. So, I tried to stabilize it by putting a piece of plexiglass on the bottom of the NES and mounting the motherboard on top of that but I had to use a very thin piece of plexiglass because I have to keep the motherboard below the power switch assembly. Well, that's another problem because it stays flimsy. And if the surface is flimsy, well, the motherboard's just gonna bend with the surface. That's probably why the solder joint popped out. This is one freaking mess. So obviously the design needs to change. And I thought about it for a while until I finally went freaking crazy, and then I just decided to turn the damn thing upside down. And guess what? It worked! Now, it actually presented a few new issues doing it this way, but those were far simpler issues than what I was encountering before. So, let's take a look at the system, and we'll see if it works this time. I've just hit the power button. Let's see what happens. Yeah! Look at it go! The NES PC lives again. So, you're looking at the near fully assembled NES PC. Now, I'm still missing the controller ports, but everything else is pretty much there. There's a keyboard and mouse temporarily hooked up to it until I finish the project, but everything else is running inside the box. Now that Windows is finished booting, let's take a closer look at everything. Let's go back to the motherboard for a second. So, I have the motherboard suspended upside down to where there's about a 1 4th inch gap between it and the bottom of the NES. Now, I may change that gap later on depending on how well it cools, but for now it seems to be working pretty well. Now, let's look at the hard drive. If you recall, the hard drive is enclosed inside the Zelda cartridge, so the cartridge isn't there just for looks. It's actually part of the system. Now, if you look at the top of the NES, you'll notice I cut a hole in it so that I could show off the Zelda cartridge. I wanted the system to look somewhat unique. 
You can also see the cartridge by flipping up the latch on the NES, and it looks just like there's a game in it, just like on the original NES. And that's the whole point, right? I mean, that's what my design of this system has been all about, getting it to look as close as possible to the original NES and not look like a PC. I've seen other NES PC designs where holes are cut in the backside, or CD-ROMs are installed, or you can see the wiring and motherboard when you flip the latch. And while I give those builders props for trying, in my view those don't look very good because they resemble too much of the PC look, not a Nintendo. And really, what's the point of doing it if it doesn't look like the Nintendo? Now, I admit that in my own design the bottom of the NES doesn't look stock because of what I did to it, and there are minor alterations on the outside, but I think these are minor enough that the stock look is preserved. I mean, you normally will never see the bottom of it anyway, and what was important to me was getting the overall look of the NES right, and I think I've accomplished that. I'm very pleased with the result. Now, of course, I'm not even close to finishing the project. There's still a lot to do. But, let's save that for another video. Until then, happy gaming everyone.